guys, welcome back to my channel. I can't believe we're already doing this again, but today I have for you the Orly Spring 2022 Color Pass. We're going to unbox it together and then I'm going to do a swatch and review. I also have a wear test for, I believe, a new product that Orly has released and sent out in the box, so stay tuned for that. If you've been watching these for a little while, I believe this is my sixth color pass. So I did a full year's worth and I resubscribed and so now I'm halfway through it. And I have really enjoyed every single one of these except for the holiday one, the last one. And I will link that up in the cards. You can see I was pretty disappointed with that one. I didn't really like it. I saw some people who had really strong feelings both ways, but this one I feel very differently on and you will see as you keep watching, I really did enjoy this color pass. Before I get into what is inside this box, for those of you who don't know, Orly Color Pass is a quarterly subscription box that you can get through the Orly Beauty website. I will link down below where you can get it. It is $35 a box if you choose to go quarter by quarter, or you can subscribe for one whole year, and that is $119. If you subscribe for the full year versus just buying them piecemeal one at a time, you do save, I think, about $25 overall. However, the downside to that is you know, with the buying them as they come out, you can kind of wait and see and wait for like reviews like mine to see if it's something that you would enjoy. Whereas with the uh, full year subscription, you just kind of get what you get. You can't really pause or anything like that. So keep that in mind. I do the yearly sub because I like to save a little bit of money and I like to do these reviews on my channel. And so I think it's worth it for me and what I'm doing with this. Um, as far as the pricing goes, like I said, it's 119 for the full year. And if you do the full year, that actually ends up saving you $109 overall if you were to buy all of the polishes individually because you get six full-sized Orly polishes. You get each seasonal collection. And so that comes out to 24 polishes. You're basically getting 50% off of those. Plus, you always get a couple bonus goodies in the box, which, you know, that's just like extra stuff and you can add that to the total value of the box. So, with all that out of the way, let's get into the unboxing. I'm going to show you live hand swatches as well as full hand swatches. I have a, a full wear test of a new product and then we will talk about my thoughts and feelings on this at the end. So let's crack into our box, which is, as always, very well packed. No space to move around. On top, we have the information card. It has a list of everything that's in the box, a little description of the collection, and a little nail art tutorial, which I always thought was a nice touch. Let's go with the bonus add-ons first. We have a bottle of Orly Bonder Base, which I have like eight ounces of, so I'm gonna give that to my little sister. And then we have a new product. This is the Orly Shining Armor Top Coat, and we are going to do a wear test later on in this video. So then after that, of course, we have the full six piece collection. This is the Impressions Collection. And you can see it is a lot of soft, kind of muted, not quite pastel color palette here. And first up, we have Parks and Parasols. This is a kind of dusty reddish color. It almost reads a little bit brown in certain lights. And all of these are going to have a very similar formula, a little bit thinner on that first coat, and you just have to build it up on the second. I found that I was having to go back and refill my brush because I kept misjudging how much I had on the brush because I'm still getting used to my nails at this length. But two coats is really all you will need, I think, for any nail length for every single color here. They all are quite opaque on that second coat. And here is the polish in a different light. This is more what it looks like in everyday light. Next, we have Dance With Me, and this is a very light peachy pink. It is probably going to be a nude for people who have lighter skin tones. Um, on me, it really brings out the red in my skin tone, so maybe not the best for me to wear, but it is really a cute color, and it really does fit well with the rest of these. Here you see it in two coats, and it does build up despite it looking a little bit light in that first coat. And here is what it would look like uh, more in real life. 
Here we have Golden Afternoon, and I'm so sorry I lost the swatch footage for this one, but I promise you um, it does get opaque in two coats just like the rest, and it is a soft yellow. And then we have Artist Garden. This is just a soft kind of not quite grungy, but almost in that tone of green. It is, again, thinner on that first coat. But these all apply very smoothly. I like the Orly brush. I know some people have issues with it. Some of them do get sent with like wonky bristles here and there, but you just cut them out and then it's very easy to use. You can see I was struggling to put the right amount of paint on my brush. Like I said, getting used to these shorter nails. But again, two coat coverage, totally opaque. You don't need to worry about nail line. And here it is under a brighter light. Then we have Blue Iris, and I really like this color. It has like kind of some purple lean to it, I feel. And here it is on the first coat. You can see my cuticles are only getting drier. Um, much uh, thinner than the others I felt, at least on that first coat. But with the second coat, you can watch it build up very nicely. I almost feel like this could fit into the very Perry scheme under certain lights, but then under brighter lights, it does look a lot more like baby boy blue. You know what I mean? And the final piece of our rainbow is Provence at dusk, and this is the kind of lavender purple in the collection. Again, very much a two coater. I don't know if Orly has very many one coaters in their repertoire. And even if they do, I feel like Orly's formula is a little bit thinner. So you would benefit from building it up in two to three coats, just because, uh, at least for me, it shows a lot of the ridges in my nails if I don't. And I found that these were no different. So two coats, even if you do get full opacity somehow, is probably gonna be best for the nail look. And here it is on all four fingers. So what did you guys think of this collection? In my opinion, um, you know, the theme was impressions. And as soon as I saw the box here, I, instantly I just knew I was going to enjoy this. I feel like when Orly picks a theme, they really just hammer it home in only six shades. I think they do a really good job of taking a smaller collection, taking a theme, and really just blowing it out of the water. As a total art plebeian, um, you know, impressionism style is one thing that I did know just a little bit about. And so when I saw this, my mind immediately went to the Monet Water Lily series. And so I ended up pulling up some pictures of that just to see kind of how they compared. And I just, I went down this huge like impressionist artist rabbit hole. And it was actually kind of cool that something like nail polish made me just want to get a little bit more into like the artistic side of things. And, um, you know, I'll throw up a couple pictures here, but really I just felt like these colors did reflect a lot of impressionist artworks that I saw. I thought they did an amazing job with that. Some of the paintings aren't as bright as, you know, these five here. Some impressionist paintings do have more muted and um, kind of like dulled down tone, dulled down tones. But I think that that's kind of where this shade, this Parks and Parasols shade comes in, this deeper kind of dustier red. I feel like without this, it would not have given me you know, exactly what I wanted. But because of this like darker tone in here, but still staying in that like lighter kind of palette, I feel like it just tied it all together and it really did what I wanted it to do. So yeah, I definitely think Orly really stuck the landing with this theme. I just like, they just nail it. They just do a pretty good job. And it also had this unintended consequence of me and my interest in art being much like reinvigorated. And so I kind of have been trying to plan a little trip to the art museum near us, the DIA, the Detroit Institute of Art. It's a fairly decent art museum. It's pretty big. Um, and they have just like a ton of different stuff there. So I'm kind of excited about that. So thanks Orly for doing that to me. And you know, one thing initially when I first saw this, I was just like, oh really? Like pastels for spring? Like really we're gonna do that? How tried and true? But these aren't like the pastels that I'm used to seeing for spring. 
And that paired with the theme, it really just kind of gave it a new life for me. And I was like so excited for these to come in. It's so funny. I usually am not this like pumped up about creams, but there was something about it that I just like, I did a Skittle manicure and I just, just love this box. I think that my favorite in the box is this rustier red Parks and Parasols. Um, it's just, like I said, it really tied the color scheme together. It elevated these from being, you know, if you look at it without, it's just kind of like a pastel palette. And then when you add it, I just feel like it gives it a little bit more depth. And, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know anything about color theory, but for me personally, when I look at that, that's just how I feel. Um, but yeah, I, surprisingly, I liked the red the most, which is this, do we even count this? This is such like a um, light neutral red that I don't think that this counts as the types of red that I usually avoid. <laughs> I also think that this particular shade of blue in there, it's really pretty. And because of the whole uh, Pantone color of the year being very peri, I know that this isn't like exactly that color, but I feel like it's in that kind of realm. And so I have a feeling that this particular color for people who buy just one-offs, this one is probably gonna sell pretty well. As for the extra items, the value added items, the bonus items, however you wanna call them, um, we do have a bottle of the Orly Bonder base coat. You guys know this is my favorite base coat ever. I actually really don't use any other base coat. I don't really experiment with a lot of base coats because I've coats because I've really found my kind of love for this. I have a couple uh, older base coats from Zoya that I'm trying to use up, but this is always my go-to. Um, I actually I buy this in eight ounce salon bottles and then I just refill my own bottle. I have a ton of it, but I did buy my sister the midi size of this so that she could try it out if she liked it and. She does like it, so I'm going to just give her this brand new one so she has a bigger bottle. And then if she ever needs refills, she can just ask me because, like I said, I buy the salon grade size of top coat because that's where I am in life. <sighs> so the other product that came in this box is something that's new to the Orly catalog. This is the Orly Shining Armor Quick Dry Long Wear Top Coat. And this retails for $15 on their website. In my opinion, that is pretty expensive for a top coat, especially considering some of the top coats that I buy that I love, Glisten and Glow, uh, they're like seven or eight bucks and you get good use out of them. So I'm not sure if it's worth the price, but I will say that it does dry down very quickly. I painted my nails about like 10 minutes ago. It's already like at a state where I feel like I can run my fingers through my hair. I can like go around and do stuff. It's quite thin, so it does not add that kind of extra oomph like gel look to your nails, even though it's supposed to, that's kind of what it says. Like it says, refresh your gel manicure without a lamp by adding a coat of shining armor. Kind of odd, I don't know. I like the bottle, I think the bottle is cute. It's got these like little stars, it's all black, but when I was talking to Nick's Polish on Instagram, he made a couple of good points about why the bottle isn't so great. Because A, it looks like gel, even though it's not, because these opaque bottles, I feel like they confuse everybody, you know? And then when you can't see through the bottle, you don't know how much is left in the bottle. So you're like, and because it's solid black, I can't really, yeah, I can't see into it. And also, I know that I keep telling you guys don't smell your nail polish, immediately smelling the nail polish, but it smells a little bit weird. It's just not, you know, I'm sure it doesn't have tooling in it, which is what I'm used to smelling in a top coat. And so like the tooling scent is really what I associate with a top coat scent, but it's just got kind of an odd smell. I gotta smell it again, hang on. Kind of like sweet in a weird way, like a gross way. So I don't know, I'm going to stick in my wear test now so you guys can see how that went and then I will be back. Okay, so we're gonna do a wear test of this new Orly Shining Armor long wear top coat. It is supposed to be a premium long wear top coat. I used Orly Bonder Base um, as my base coat and then I did just a Skittle Manny with the new Impressions collection. And then I topped everything with this guy. Um, 
It is vegan. Obviously, it says it's formulated without harmful ingredients. And, yeah, it comes in this uh, nifty little black bottle. You can't see in it. I think it's a cute bottle. Uh, but I was talking with Nick's Polish over on Instagram, and he was like, yeah, it's now you don't know how much you have left, and everybody's going to think it's gel. And I was like, you're right, you're right. But here is the actual manicure look at this by the way not to derail but i literally stabbed myself with an orange wood stick like two weeks ago and it won't heal um but yeah so it is a thinner top coat i have one other top coat from orly it is the second dry i also got this in a um orly color pass box this was really thin this was quite thin as well it was thicker than the second dry but not by much and so I ended up I don't know if you can tell kind of overshooting the nail a little bit flooding my cuticles just a tad um but yeah it is a thinner looking top coat and we will see how this wears throughout the week okay so it's been about a full 24 hours since I top coated these you can see uh, they are pretty shiny, I will say that. Like, they do live up to the shininess factor. But, as I suspected, this uh, top coat is very thin. You can see every ridge on my nails. Um, it has already chipped on this nail just a little bit. But that's the only nail it's chipped on, so that might just be something I did. I just noticed it feeling a little bit snaggy. And then, here is my other hand maybe there we go and everything is fine over here no chips just that same super ridginess uh that you saw on the other hand so so far it's living up to the shine it did dry down quick but it's just too thin for my tastes okay this is the second full day of wear can you tell i have not oiled my cuticles today um the chip i don't know if it got a little bigger or not but it's still there i don't know why it wouldn't still be there hillary that's how it works i did get another chip i like hit a table it was painful and that chipped off i've never had it chip like that before um you can see there's some tip wear on my thumbs which is especially normal for me i use my thumbs for a lot of things i have opposable thumbs i need them um but nothing else on this hand aside from the tip wear and the extra chip. And then, you can see my feet, look at that. Um, yeah, we have a same chip, same color, same position. That's kind of weird. Uh, I've never really had that happen. You can especially see the tip wear on my pointer finger on my right hand. You can also see how flat the nail is getting because I've been just like, one finger typing all day for no reason just because I'm stupid I don't know but yeah so <laughs> that's probably why there's tip wear on that and this thumb looks fine so it's really just a couple new chips and some tip wear okay so this is the next day I think this is like officially day three I just washed my hands sorry they're wet uh, this is gonna be the last check-in because like we've got chips here we have on um, the pointer finger on the um, middle finger you can see that tip wear is really riding up and that chip is getting bigger and then this morning I had a chip on both sides of this and that tip wear and then just tip wear on the pinky don't look at my feet gross this finger just totally chipped off um, we have a little bit on that pointer finger I don't know if you can see um, the thumb looks mostly okay same with the other two fingers but just overall not very long lasting and I have to say these are starting to go a little bit matte um, they're no longer shiny they were a little bit shiny still yesterday but today not so much so I'm gonna call it quits this lasted three days on me very thin you could see all my ridges and it went matte on the third day so definitely not living up to the claims in my opinion at least for me on my body so yeah I think that pretty much covers it like I said, I really enjoyed this particular box. I don't know if it's just like a lot more enjoyment because it's coming off the heels of one that I really didn't enjoy, or if it's one of those things that I just really truly enjoyed the inspiration. Like I said, I found myself for almost like an hour and a half just reading about impressionist painters because of this box. So that was kind of fun for me. 
I don't love the value added items so much, but that is in like completely subjective because like I said, I buy eight ounce bottles of the Bonner base coat. Um, the top coat is fine so far right now, but you guys just saw my wear test, so maybe it wasn't fine. I guess I don't know. I'm not a long wear kind of gal. I um, take this stuff off in two to three days typically, so it's not for me, but I can completely understand why they would add it in. So I think that it is a good item for a box like this. It's just that I am the outlier here. I will say though, you know, they put little like nail art tutorials on the bottom of every card. I think it would be cool if they did include just maybe a little bit more nail art items to help with like doing some additional nail art. I don't know, that might just not be their niche, but that's just one thought I had. So yeah, that is going to be it from me. Let me know down below. Are you guys subscribed to Color Pass or did you pick up this collection specifically? I love to hear from you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.